What's up all you Minties? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition and join me today as I look at the very first part of this flash reading order. There's going to be two parts to this. Today we are focusing right after the events of Crisis on Infinite Earths and taking it all the way right before Final Crisis. So please stay tuned. And before I go any further, thank you again to our patrons for voting for this. Every month we have a monthly poll on our Patreon, and we'd love for you to join. All of that information is in the description down below. And let's get started. Now, if you know me and you've been following my channel, you know that my DC starts from Crisis on Infinite Earths and forward. So anything from the Golden Age and Silver Age, I tend to not talk about, um, but Honestly, DC had been doing a really good job of releasing those omnibus of uh, the DC Silver Age and Golden Age. So if you want to check those out, you are more than welcome to. I only have this, The Flash of Two Worlds, because I think it's an important comic book in the life of Flash. Now here's a book that I think is very essential to reading The Flash. Whether you start with Barry Allen, or you start with Jay Garrick, or you start with Wally West, this is the life story of the Flash. So this is written in the style like I Iris Allen had written this. Iris, of course, being the wife of Barry Allen, who was the Silver Age Flash. And unfortunately, after the events of Crisis on Infinite Earths, Barry Allen was not the Flash anymore. But this particular hardcover does a really good job, it's also been released in trade paperback, of catching you up with pretty much everything that happened, all the high points and low points in Barry Allen's life. Like I said, told through the eyes of Iris West. It's all written by Mark Wade and Brian Augustine. Gil Kane does a lot of the artwork. So I think it's very essential to this reading order to at least try to understand the character of Barry before we get started with Wally. So speaking of Wally, we are kicking this off with Flash by Mark Wade, Volume 1. As of this video, the Flash Savage Velocity that collects issues 1 through 18, all written by Mike Barron, and annual number 1, is not out yet. So, as of this video, we are kicking it off with Flash, Mark Wade, Book 1. And in a little box somewhere, I'm going to put what this book collects. So this is the book that kicks off The Flash with the special number one, which is like a 50th anniversary story for The Flash and features all three of The Flashes in separate adventures, um, and it, as well as a future Flash that's written by Mark Wade. As a matter of fact, the future Flash, uh, what was his name, John Fox, uh, is the only part that's written by Wade. So what's important about this book, and I think it does an amazing job, is... This is the story of Born to Run. So think of Born to Run like Batman Year One, right? Born to Run is to Flash what Batman Year One is to Batman. Because it is pretty much the first year that Wally West became the Flash. Because he was, or I guess Kid Flash, because he started off as Kid Flash. So during this time, after Crisis on Infinite Earths, Wally West is now the Flash because something happened to Barry Allen, and it's really difficult to do these sometimes without spoilers, but I don't want to mess it up for anybody that has not read it. But this is what kicks it off, and Born to Run retells that origin story of how Wally West became Kid Flash at first, and then eventually Flash. And then eventually we get to meet all his supporting cast members that will play a big role in Wally West's life. So I'll talk about the other flashes here in a second. So here is volume two. Uh, this one is kicks off with the Bloodlines annual, introducing us to a new character. But the important thing that happens in this particular book right here of Mark Wade is the return of Barry Allen. This was well after Crisis on Infinite Earths. Barry Allen was gone, out of commission, if you will. And this is his return. And then the twist at the end, or it's actually two-thirds of the way of who the Barry Allen is that was back. Oh, man. It's one of the biggest twists to me, not only in Flash history, but in comic book history as a whole. It's awesome. And I don't know. this. It's one of my favorite Flash stories. So during this time, the only speedsters that we have are really Jay Garrick, the original Golden Age Flash. Um and Wally West, which is the modern age Flash. We also have Max Mercury, who's running around, <laughs> and Jesse Quick. But those characters will come into play a little bit later. Mainly right now, it's Jay Garrick bonding with Wally. Now we're moving on to book three. 
you can probably tell the artwork is about to change because all of those were pretty much drawn by Greg LaRoque. He was the gentleman who was in charge of the art at the time. Mark Wade is still, of course, writing these. And now he is joined by this talented young gun named Mike Wieringo. So this takes place after those events of the return of Barry Allen and Wally West is trying to get things back to normal in Central City. Of course, when he's trying to get his life back together, he's got the rug pulled under him from under his feet because he has a lawsuit against him. Um, as someone who claimed that the Flash failed to save her uh, due to negligence. So now we are introduced to another speedster. Remember when I said that only Jay Garrick and Max Mercury and Jesse Quick were around, as well as Wally? We are introduced to this little guy right here, Bart Allen. Now, why does he have that name, Bart Allen? Well, I guess you'll have to read the book and find out if he has any relation to Barry Allen. But he is the speedster known as Impulse, who will later join Young Justice, join the Teen Titans, and actually has a bigger role to play as the Flash later on, which we'll get to. So here is book four. Now we see some more familiar names, or maybe some that you're familiar with these days. Besides Mike Wieringo, now Mark Wade is joined by this guy right here, Salvador La Roca. And La Roca at the time had, of course, a different style. Now I think he uses a lot of light boxes. But what I do have to say about the storyline, is just seems like during this time, it's epic story after epic story. And... Just when you think you're done with crossovers, or actually epic stories, sorry, this storyline here called Terminal Velocity just smacks you in the face. So here we have Jay Garrick, Johnny Quick, which is Jesse's father, Max Mercury, and Wally West. And there is Jesse right there. And we also have Bart Allen as the speedster. So all these characters here, something bad's about to happen to them. And... Oh, I forgot. Yes, this is also the Carlos Pacheco issue. So not only is it Salvador La Roca, Mike Wieringo, but we also have artwork by Carlos Pacheco. And I happen to love his art style during this time. Now, before you ask, these are not available in omnibus format, which is why I have these complete collections. They've been available before in smaller trade paperbacks and long out of print, and they weren't really finished, honestly. So this is The Flash by Mark Wade, book five. And now we have a crossover event. This is an actual crossover event. This is called Dead Heat. And it's a part of a crossover event with Impulse. As a matter of fact, Impulse has his own ongoing series at the time. So he was such a popular character when he first appeared. And then eventually, right after, I believe, Terminal Velocity, the DC editors were like, okay, we got to give this kid his own title. So Impulse um, got his own book. And issues 10 through 11 are collected in this book and artwork by somebody you may be familiar with, Humberto Ramos. So, Dead Heat is the storyline of how the speedsters, one by one, are losing their speed. And then the Flash is introduced to this new villain right here in these pages. And even though Wally West thinks he's still the fastest man alive, I think he's met his match with this guy right here, Savitar, who's the villain of this Dead Heat crossover event. All right, here we have book six, and this is the last of the Mark Wade run for his first time writing Flash. Don't worry, he will be back. Um, but this is the one that marks the end of that. And then, because after this, we have Grant Morrison and Mark Miller to temporarily take over the book. And this one here has one of my favorite stories. It's called Faster Friends, which is a Green Lantern and Flash crossover. And one thing to keep in mind, it's that it's Kyle Rayner, Green Lantern, not Hal Jordan, because of the events of Emerald Twilight. So during this time, it's, yeah, Kyle Rayner. Now, there is a Volume 7 solicited for the Complete Collection. I believe it comes out in May. And that one collects issues 142 to 150. So, where are issues 130 to 141? Look no further than The Flash by Grant Morrison and Mark Miller. Now, this has been available before in two trade paperbacks here, Grant Morrison, Grant Morrison, Mark Miller, called Emergency Stop and Human Race. But this one here replaces both of those with a better page quality or paper quality. And also the spine matches those of the Mark Wade complete collection. So this is the story of the Black Flash and how he's coming for the speedsters. Whether it's Jay Garrick, Max Mercury, Jesse Quick or the Keystone Comet. So he's coming after all of them. And Wally has to go deeper into the Speed Force than he's ever been, or he's about to lose everything that he holds dear. Honestly, the stories in here, eh, they were okay. 
But at the time, Grant Morrison was writing Justice League, or JLA, sorry. And a lot of the things that happen in here to Wally West actually affect the things that happen to the Flash in JLA. All right, now this is pretty interesting, but you may see this book out there. It's called The Flash, Mercury Falling. This, even though it's a great story, does not contain any of the Flash issues. It all is just nothing but impulse issues. Uh, written by Todd DeZago. There's artwork in here by a young Ethan Van Skyver, but that's that's what this is. Even though it's labeled as The Flash, man, it does feature one of my favorite characters right there, Max Mercury, as well as some other speedsters too, like Jay Garrick and Jesse Quick. Now, I am using the original Omnis to talk about Jeff Johns' Flash. These are also available in complete collections and skinny trade paperbacks. Although those trade paperbacks are long out of print and you really want the complete collections. As a matter of fact, the complete collections match up those beautiful spines from the Mark Wade complete collections. So we have Jeff Johns now writing The Flash. I know you all have heard me go on and on about that man, but man, this to me, The Flash, his Flash run was amazing. It's a little bit of a slow burn, I'm not gonna lie, uh, because right here we really have a number of just story arcs that are coming to fruition, if you will, and a lot of them aren't resolved, not in this volume. We have a very Lewis Carroll-esque story, it's like a reality hopping storyline. Then you have the fight with the weather wizard, but here is what Jeff Johns is able to do. It is pure joy to read his stories. His flash stories are just pure, imaginative, well-paced, and just full of nuance. They feel so believable um, because of the characters, all his supporting characters like Linda. And then on top of that, he's able to just take that speed force that Mark Wade introduced and used it to what I thought was its fullest potential and just keep growing with it. Like he made the Flash, Wally West, one of my favorite characters. Volume 2. Again, using the original Omnibus. Hopefully we'll get a Volume 2 of the new one. Because we do have the new Omni right here, which is a lot bigger and contains a lot more. I've done an overview of that if you want to keep an eye out on the channel for that episode or go look for that episode. Hopefully they will continue that format. But here we have two of my favorite storylines, which is Rogues and Crossfire. And it's all about Wally West facing each rogue member and just developing these characters. He shifts the focus. Now, he's able to shift the focus from Wally to the supporting cast members who are the rogues, his villains, right? And I don't give a crap about Captain Cold or Captain Boomerang or Heat Wave or Gorilla Grodd. Like, I, you know, honestly, I didn't care about these characters. But what he, he was able to do, it reminded me of the things that Peter David or John Ostrander were able to do, was take these characters I didn't care about and just make me care about each one of them. Even, even the, weather, the Weather Wizard, Pied Piper. Uh, oh my gosh, I can't talk highly enough of Jeff Johns' Flash run. I would come home from work and just look forward to reading The Flash. Because to me, it reminded me of being a kid again and reading those old Claremont issues of X-Men. I was like, no, I'm ready to come home and I don't care about work. I want to read The Flash. Now, you may have seen some of this artwork here is by Scott Collins. Uh, the covers are provided by Jim Lee, usually, but Brian Boland does a lot of them, too. Here's Scott Collins. But one of my other favorite artists that I don't hear a lot of people talk about is this guy right here, Giustiano. I'm a big fan of his art. Yeah, but Scott Collins. Uh, I know it, it took me a while to get used to it because of his lack of shadows. But I love his artwork. It's brutal and just in your face. Now, let's keep going. So here we have Flash Omnibus Volume 3. I don't know if there's going to be three of the new Omnibus. But there's three of these here. Um, now, if you see from the little box, there's going to be some orphaned issues. Because after this ends, it takes us directly into... By the way, this has one of my favorite story arcs too. The Rogue's War. Oh, it's so freaking awesome. Pretty much all his villains are either fighting each other and then they're coming after Wally West. There's a crossover with Wonder Woman that's written by Greg Rucka. Well, the Wonder Woman part is written by Greg Rucka. Absolutely amazing and sets up the events of Villains United. So yes, everything here, Jeff Johns is about to finish out his arc and leave the book because he's about to take over other DC books 
and he's about to write Infinite Crisis. But by now, I think he's become a popular writer, and everybody just wants him to write one of their characters on the books. There's some amazing things that happen in here. Um, so all of the events of this lead up to Infinite Crisis. However, 225 isn't really the final issue of Flash. It continues without Jeff Johns. So we have 226 through 230 that are orphaned, which have a bunch of guest writers. But still, I hope in the next collection, if they keep going with these Omnis, I hope they collect those orphaned issues because you all know I hate those orphaned issues. Now we have another crisis. This time it's not Crisis on Infinite Earths. This time it's Infinite Crisis. And during the events of Infinite Crisis, this is the big omnibus, by the way. I love this thing. We've reviewed it on Old Reader, New Reader. But I think it's time we do some Flash. During this time, we are about to lose Wally West in this crossover. Now I'm not saying he's dying. I'm just saying he's disappearing. It's really tough to talk about these things without going into spoilers. But I will say he will be out of commission. And he is no longer the Flash. So what happens to the Flash? What happens to the Flash title? Well, we start over anew with Flash. The fastest man alive, lightning in a bottle. So this is the first six issues of Danny Bilson's run. He's the new writer on Flash. But there's also a new Flash. And that is Bart Allen. Remember when I said Impulse would get to be a bigger part? Well, now he has become the Flash. He's actually aged and become the new Flash for a new era. And sadly, he didn't last that long as the Flash. So let's continue to the next issues. So here's the second and only other collection of Flash, the fastest man alive. That takes us all the way to issue 13. Bart Allen is still the Flash. But something happens here with this character named, who's a little bastard named Inertia, who was kind of a joke character during the Impulse years. It's like his um, his own little Professor Zoom, if you will, which is this guy right here, like the reverse Flash. So something happens to Bart Allen, and who's going to be the new Flash? Because he's out of commission now. Well, in order to find that out, you have to read this first. So this is one of the ones that I like to sneak in. This is Justice League of America, the Lightning Saga. It's a crossover event between JSA and Justice League of America. Not JSA, it was Justice Society of America during the time. But it does feature somehow, not going to say how they do it, but it features the return of Wally West. Which takes us to our last book of this reading order. Again, I need to remind you all, there will be a part two where we'll go from Final Crisis all the way to the recent books they have. Mark Wade is not only back, but so is Wally West as The Flash. And he is joined by these two characters here who have superpowers, and I'm not gonna say who they are because I think it's an important part of the storyline. This time he is joined by Daniel Acuna, who is the artist on this book. And The Flash is about to take some weird turns because something's about to happen in Final Crisis. And Final, Final Crisis kind of kicks off something, but we'll talk about that the next time. And there you have it. These are all the books you need. This, by the way, is also available in trade paperback. As a matter of fact, most of these are available in trade paperback format. And there you have the reading order part one. Now, if you're interested in purchasing some of these books, because unfortunately some of them are out of print, you can check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you minties, Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first-time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout, and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the comprehensive reading order of The Flash Part 1. Don't forget to tune in to Part 2. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button. Again, thank you to our patrons for voting for this. The next poll should be up here in the next couple of days because every month our patrons get to vote for what the next reading order should be. If you haven't joined our Patreon, please think about doing so. It's a great way to support the channel and all of that information is in the description down below. And leave those comments down below in case I missed anything. Because sometimes I think I did or something that you think would be essential to reading these as well. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you for watching. And please remember, stay healthy and stay safe out there.